Go ahead and call the meeting in order. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Yes, sir. It's an honor for me to do this. Let's pray again. God, you're a wonderful and a gracious God to us, and we're so thankful to you for allowing us this good day that we have. Lord, thank you for this uh, this place that we're in. And it's a good place to be from, a good place to live, and a good place to serve you. And we're thankful for that privilege, Lord. And God, we pray your blessings upon this governing body here tonight, Lord, that you would bless them as they uh, discuss the issues and make decisions, Lord. And, uh, we ask for your hand. Lord. And Lord, we know that you're all wise and that you have all knowledge and that we're limited in what we know and in our wisdom. So we're going to trust you tonight. And Lord, we just ask that your hand be upon us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mr. McMahon, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Item A is discuss alarm ordinance. Well, uh, we've had a breakdown of alarm calls for uh, 2012. We've been having a report on that. Last council meeting we discussed this briefly. And uh, so we went back and we uh, put in all the other calls that, that police department responded to uh, in 2012. This included residential alarms, business alarms, and uh, those types of things. Uh, we responded to a total of uh, 623 alarms during last year, uh, through 2012. Out of that 623, 559 of those alarms were false alarms. Uh, and uh, so that, uh, that's the reason we're asking for this uh, alarm awareness present uh, so that we can, uh, first of all, it's a, it's a tremendous drain on our resources and our manpower. Because anytime we respond to an alarm call, our officers are tied up for anywhere from a few minutes <coughs> to 45 minutes to an hour, waiting for responsible parties to respond and those kinds of things takes our officers away from uh, other duties that they should be responding to and they're, they're not available, uh, you know, for other calls that come in. And, sure. Does a response mean that a car was called and, and officers were actually on the side? Absolutely. In every situation? Every, every time we get an alarm call, we respond. Unless, and uh, the only reason that the officer will not go to the location is if we get a call from the alarm company, they cancel the alarm call. These, this information I just gave you are actual calls that we received and responded to. Chief, I got a question on, on these alarm systems, that the problem the problem causing alarm systems, I'm sure you have certain ones that, that you get more calls on than others, right? Yeah, we do. Okay. Have have you addressed that with the owners of the properties? Is how you have a problem with your alarm, you need to get it fixed. You're, you know, you're, you're wearing out our resources. Well, we we do that. Well, I mean, we, we talk to them about it, but we have no, there's no mechanism in place to do anything to force that issue to be done. We can ask, uh, uh, we can ask the uh, alarm holder uh, to do that. Yeah, we can also uh, have that conversation with the alarm company, but with no mechanism in place to, to enforce that, there's really not a lot we can do other than to continue to respond to the alarms. Well, can't you, can't you tell those people, you know, this is like the third time, you know, in a month or second time in a month that we've had this call. You either get it fixed or we're going to have to stop responding to your alarm system. Well, first of all, I don't think that that's something we want to do is stop responding well, to the alarms. Well, maybe that's action that needs to be done. They can do that. They don't know that you know, you're abusing the system. I think I'll defer to the city attorney on that. I think we've got a liability issue. You you're exposing yourself you know, if you don't go to the alarms. I mean, even, even though there's been false alarms there in the past, uh, if, you don't, if you don't go to the alarm, and it is something, you know, I realize it's the 
boy called Wolf. Right. But uh, if you don't go to alarm it, and it is something. So what's the uh, to answer now? to answer your to answer your other question, when we respond, in probably 99 percent of the cases, it's the exact same person we're having contact with each time we respond to that alarm. Mm -hmm. So they're aware of it. <clears throat> so, so what's the remedy? I, I'm not real clear on the remedy. So you go, I know it's at three false alarms in a permit period. So you have the fourth one, you write them a ticket? Or? We can. We can. And, uh, uh, but in most cases, what you, what you do is you want to initially send them a letter and let them know uh, that, you know, that we've responded this many times this location, the alarms have been false. Uh, if you've got a problem with your alarm system or there's a problem with your uh, the company that's providing the service, you need to get that resolved or you can be, can and will be cited and, and uh, or use your, lose, lose your uh, uh, permit to have an alarm. Uh, that's the, you know, the, again, this is not to punish anybody. This is the more effectively resources and you know we're responding to false alarms time and time and time and time again that's not an effective use of, uh, of our police resources is there is there any danger chief of being able to decide what's a false alarm and, and what's not I mean if a guy comes by and jiggles the window and the alarm goes off and he takes off and you get there and you don't see anything you know is there a danger of, of saying well that's a false alarm and you're going to punish this guy when that's that. That's not our intention, uh, and and you know unless we've got you know. But you said right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. And yeah, no, no, we're not we're not out to punish anybody. We're just uh, out to get people to be responsible for the alarms they have in their businesses and their <clears> homes. <throat> and if we have a situation like that where going, somebody's going by shaking the doors to shut the alarm off, set the alarm off, and that does happen, and uh, but you know it's very rare if it ever happens that somebody's got to go by that business every night and shake the door or, or go to a, a residence and do that. We just don't find out as a as a problem. Well, this applies to charges also. And, and this is, this would apply to everybody that has an alarm system. So they can be cited. They could be yes. Are you looking to charge a fee for this permit or just a permit? I, you know, I'm not looking. That's up to the council. That's up to the council. I mean, I, I'm just looking for a way to hold these uh, companies and these uh, and, and the alarm holders uh, responsible, so that uh, you know, if, if, if people are not willing to take uh, you know responsibility for their alarm systems and and, <clears throat> and those kinds of things, that, like I, get, I say, it all comes back down to the drain on our resources and having to respond to each and every one of these alarms. Well, you, you know as well as I do, it's a, it's a change in the time <coughs> for alarm systems are a necessity nowadays because of the crime. It's not, it's not anybody's fault, it's just the way the society's come out. And uh, unfortunately, it, it's it's come to be a drain on the police department because of this, and I understand that. But I don't want to penalize the uh, public for having an alarm system. You know, we, and we don't. And, and a lot of it will be, you know, the installers are not installing a good equipment. You know, uh, I still think that we should. You know, if, if we have a a property owner has a problem with an alarm system, we need to tell them you need to get it fixed. You have this amount of time. Um, I'm not for a permit as much as I am just giving them, uh, we can send them letters or whatever and give them a certain amount of time. And, well, I'm, and I'm not asking for, you know, homeowners to have to have a permit to have the alarm. Okay. Um, one of the things that we're looking at, I think it's the alarm, uh, correct, or the ordinance, Jerry, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not looking at it right now, but uh, companies that are going to do business in, in Canada. <coughs> install well, alarms. Install and get a permit. Yeah, and yeah. Permit. yeah. And okay. That's where I'm looking. For. That's where I'm looking for the permit, not the individual homeowner. Okay. I, I understand what you were talking about. Yeah.
Yeah, no, I'm not asking the business owner or the, the homeowner to have a permit. It's the companies that are doing <coughs> business in Canada okay. to have a permit. Well, there's a permit required. I don't understand. Is that not, I mean, this is a long permit. Permit required. No person shall use an alarm system without first obtaining a permit for such an alarm system. Well, that's, that, that, that was, that's not my, that's not my intent. I mean, we can take that out of the ordinance. That's not my intent. That's, not, that's my interject. Um, we're talking about a call and a half a day. That's just taking a call and a half a day, one one and a half calls a day on average. That's what this amounts to being. Times how many? How much time? Yeah, I mean, one of those. You're talking about an so, hour at most so. a day for one officer. For how much controversy it sounds like this is stirring, I don't know. It's even worth well going down that road if it's going to be a lot of controversy for an hour. It's worth of, and you're going to a business and checking the business out. Well, you know, it's to me, I think. <coughs> Unfortunately, if you have an alarm system, you're time to time, you're going to set it off. I set, I set mine off this afternoon when I come home. But, you know, I quickly put the code in and turned it off. ADT called me, canceled it out. And we never get that call. The only, the only time that I ever would, would want the police department, they call me first. And if I'm not home, I say, yes, send the police department because I can't go. That, that would be the only time that you would ever get the call is if I'm out of town or they can't get a hold of me. And uh, I know of two occasions where you've gone to my business for that reason. But you're one of the few. Yeah. Normally I go myself, you know. And not every alarm company operates like that. Yeah. So it depends on the company also. And unfortunately, like I said, we do, we're human, we do set them off from time to time. And it's sure. and just too many gray areas. I mean, the wind is blowing, the alarm went off. You know, it's blame it on the wind. Blame it on the guy railing the doors. Well, it's my, just, my to alarm, me, it seems like a lot of gray area. My here. alarm system in my business is, is wireless. It has a battery in each sensor. If a battery gets weak, that sets that sensor off. So that, that can be a problem. Maybe people have bad batteries. But that falls back to the installers should maintain the system. So, well, it, falls, it falls back on the whoever has the alarm system to install the their back to the company and say, well, there's a problem here and we need to get it fixed. I agree. Exactly. So, Chief, does this just involve the police department or does the fire department get involved? We we get a lot of alarms. And what, our, what our fire alarms involve is they go to do maintenance. They don't understand their alarm system. <coughs> They'll get there and cut and saw and do something. Next thing, they're setting it off. We've gone, a lot of it is, if you, you can explain to them, but then they get another contractor in there, or you get one, like one of the housing units. I won't say which one, but they change maintenance people. They don't live around here. You can't get them. And you'll have continual alarms until finally you, you kind of have to make a point blank point about it but we're, we go on them uh, it can be a nuisance at times the problem is when you look at accidents amongst public safety officials a lot of times it's re uh, responding to and from false alarms and this is not unlike any or uh, ordinances that are not in place in many many cities around the country and uh, just because of this very same thing, is it, uh, it's a tremendous drain on resources. But the ordinance is written that they got proposed doesn't include fire alarms, it excludes it. So let me, let me get this straight. Well, I, I know where we're at on this. Any new installed alarms, or are we going to go back to alarms that's already in, say you need to get a permit? Are you wanting to go back to us and say that's, what this, that, that's what this would require. That everybody, every alarm user would be, be required to have an annual permit. And there won't, won't be any fee on it. So that's up, that's up, to, that's up to the council. So what we discussed was the possibility of just looking at a permit for the companies that install these <coughs> these devices, so that that's who is held responsible for it. That was another. Well, you know, the alarm holder has to be responsible also, and 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 the alarm holder has to be able to go back to the alarm company and say, my alarm keeps going off. Right. 
we keep having problems. And uh, you know, that's that's a whole other tab of this. I mean, it's. Well, I'm I'm okay with with a permit bill. I understand where you're going with it, as long as we don't come up with the speed. You want that? Want them to get a permit? Say we're going to get a permit where it'll be on file, and you can be issued no a a citation if you fail to comply. Maintain your license. Maintain your license. I'm okay with it as long as there's not a fee on it. I'm not going to put up that burden on you know on anybody on it. But we would need to include the fire department on that. You know, change the wording where it says it excludes fire alarm. It's, it's excludes. Bad idea. You know this is a yearly permit, so you're going to have however many alarm system people coming up here at City Hall at a certain time every year to get a permit. And how it's worded here, if you vote on this ordinance tonight. No, they won't vote tonight, though. Okay. This is not, it's not, I want to talk to the It's not here to be voted on tonight. Could we refer it back to the points committee and, and maybe come up with some changes in it? Because it... Obviously. You can do. You can do. I mean, I'm just. I'm just saying it. It's like we have a lot of questions, and I don't know. We want to spend the whole meeting going on. No, I think we need to move moving on. I mean, we're getting to. Sound like there's half of us disputing <coughs> even what's in the ordinance, so we need to. I, I can see where the chief wants it done. I certainly can, but I also think we've got to think it through a little bit more cautiously. So I, I'm making a motion that we turn it back over to the police committee. Um, Motion to second. Aye. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Please come in. Clear. <coughs> down. Okay. Um, how an ordinance? Um. I just had one question about the towing ordinance on the, the, um, Insurance is that an adequate amount of insurance? Is that adequate? Well, I mean, I don't know. That's I mean, it's adequate. It is, but that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a bare minimum, isn't it? Really, I, I, I really don't want to get involved in it because it's pertaining to my business, but that's not what I carry. I carry. I carry. I have to carry seven hundred fifty thousand dollars because I fall under the federal guidelines. How many record operators are there in the city? There's, I guess, three right now. There's three right now. With this, you will have one. One what? Uh, one record operator. Why? Because it has to be within five miles. We need to change to six at least. Yeah. That, that, that won't work for her because those brothers his lot actually. Mr. McMahon is only one in 10 town. I thought the record were both tested on the city hall. Well, he actually is, but his storage yard is 5.7 <coughs> miles from the city hall. Uh, oh, from the city hall, not from city limits. Right. The, the way this is, okay. that has to be 5 points, or 5 miles, at least 5.7. I was thinking maybe this could just be a license. Requirements for a tow company. You know, they come up to the just like any other business will do. They don't pay a fee. They just come up with a business license for a tow company. They have to show proof of insurance. They already have one. They already, they already have that. That's, that's already, that's already required. Can we amend the policies then associated with that to meet these goals? Well, that's what this does. Okay. But it has to be changed in ordinance. Then. Sure. Well, okay. it's a new ordinance. That's it. We're not changing, changing it, creating it. It's a new ordinance. Okay. You better be possible to change it six miles instead of five. Okay. Yeah. All right, ask a question. That you're the one you say you don't want to be involved because you're in the business, but do, in reading through this ordinance, does it imply that it's going to be difficult to? Uh, comply with the ordinance itself? I mean, it sounds like... No, not really, because it should be done in the first place. Yeah, okay. This, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear the air on this. I discussed this with Chief Payne because, you know, if you're going to run a business in the city, you need to have any adequate insurance to operate your business. There's been some, in the past, I've been doing this for 31 years, and 
It's always been a policy that if you want to get on the rotation list at the police department, you just call the chief police and say, hey, I bought a record, I've got a lot, I need to get on the list. And basically that's all you had to do. There's no requirements as far as insurance or any other thing to be on the rotation list. But I've always had it. And it's always been a thorn in my side because I'm paying all these high dollar insurance policies. And, you know, I asked if there was something we could do to come up with some guidelines to make it more fair for everybody. Well, I agree it's the with same that. policy as a contractor coming in the city and not having adequate insurance competing against Steve Pro or some of the other main businesses. Is there a rotation that's strictly positive? We, yes, there is a rotation. And uh, <clears throat> Mr. McMahon, uh, he and I discussed that, and I went back and got a, a copy of the, the uh, dispatch log, and uh, we looked at that, and, and looked like the rotation was being followed. And, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty legit. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we, we give them, we give each person the opportunity to choose a company first. So, okay. And that's where we're. And that's where we want to go now. Is is. As, as an extension of this, is then put the, the burden, if you want to call it, on whoever is the owner, the driver of the vehicle, of uh, which record service they want to use. And then uh, that takes us out of that. Well, the police department is sending all the business to back lines. Yeah, it just makes it more fair for everybody. So if they say it doesn't matter, then you just use that rotation system. Well, if they say it doesn't matter, <coughs> you're going to show them a list of three and say pick one. Okay. It's your, it's your goal to pick one. Unless they're incapacitated. Yeah. And then and then we will That's the way the state operates. That's you know, right. basically. Yeah. 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 What yeah, the, one yeah, of the other a, issues. There's that, a lawsuit. That, yeah, uh, in St. Louis. Out of, well, actually around Raw. Yeah. I think it was in St. Louis. But where uh, the highway patrol was using a strict rotation schedule and they weren't allowing people to to choose and this one company who had a preferential towing contract with some big trucking companies was being left out and they sued and, and, uh, and won or at least they avoided summary judgment and uh, after that I would control quit using rotation I think if we allow the choice first and if they don't make a choice they go to rotation I think we're safe. That's, that's basically what's safe there. Yeah. The, the biggest concern that I had was was the insurance issue. If you're going to operate your business, you need to have the the, uh, the insurance. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a cold. But you know, we always felt that if we towed a vehicle in impound, we're responsible for that vehicle. It's covered under our insurance policy as long as it's in our our hands. And. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's all that Chief and I had talked about. And I think one of the things, that, and that we discussed also was the fact that uh, these tow companies need to have a secure location where they're towing your vehicle to, not just a vacant lot someplace that anybody can get into and that type yeah. of thing. Because, I mean, you know, well, well, that's a big investment. Much money putting new lots up over ours, you know, 400 watt lot, lighting system. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think there's some, I think it's a lot of there's a lot of good compelling reasons to, to have an ordinance such as this in place, and, and then that way that uh, you know we're also looking out for the for the, the citizens and even people from out of the area if a vehicle gets towed that at least there's there's a mechanism in place and some sense of responsibility that their, their property would be looked after. Um, you know that the lot you're talking about. It's uh, it's pretty wide open out there, and as far as the location of where those vehicles are being stored, and uh, you know unless there's some kind of security or something like that out there, anybody can get in that lot and go through vehicles and get those kinds of things. So I think there's some I think there's some you know compelling reason why we we need an ordinance like this. Any more discussion? Uh, one question, Bob. Uh, is that 20 minutes response to unfeasible? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> if, if my guys can't respond any faster than 20 minutes, we don't need to be taking a call in the first place. You know, so. If you're going to try to get 
talk so busy, you would. We would tell them we, we, we can't tell them all another person. Yeah. And I, now, at my time, 3 o'clock in the morning, we're not sitting by the phone dressed. So, mm -hmm. you know, a driver has to get out of bed, get dressed. And my driver lives across town. He has to drive to the shop, get a truck. It may take him 15 to 20 minutes in the wintertime, you know, or, or in, implement weather, you know. That's more than enough time. And our, and our concern there is, you know, if we have an accident blocking the road and we can't get the vehicles out of the road and stuff, we need to be able to get the roads open. It's a safety hazard to have those crash vehicles in there. It allows for a reasonable response time. If, if he can't respond in that period of time, we go to whoever's next on the rotation and he gets put back on the road. Yeah, we're, we're not going to take the call if we can't be there on a reasonable amount of time. Most, most of the record companies are, are, uh, are the same way. They're going, you know what, oh, I don't have a driver or I'm you know, I'm 40 minutes away. And we can just go it's coming. Times I've called Bub and said, Bub, will you go to take this call for me? You know, whatever. We, we try to work together a little bit on that. So. Does Bob not have any responsibility as far as coming to open a road if, if there's an accident? Do you know any? No. I do not. Okay. Thank you. 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 We'll move on to the next item. We want to bring the front line being brought back up. Next meeting. Next meeting. Next meeting. With the change that we asked for, right? Right. Okay. That, that six miles will take care of everybody, right? Yes. Yeah. Are there any other changes in the way? I, I'm okay with pretty much everything. There's a couple of things that, I'm, that I'll have to do. But it's, it's what about the insurance limits? Is that too low? It's a lot lower than what I've already got. Yeah. I understand that. <clears throat> but um, is that like the state minimum or something like that? Maybe. It's close to it. It's, not, it's, it's not the state minimum. Where is that now? It's uh, page 3, 50, section 8, 50, 50, 50 100. I wouldn't want the operators or a business like yours. Not for any uh, damage that caused by the record company, no. no. I think that, uh, yeah. Mr. McMahon, you told other things, other big rigs and stuff like that where other people don't as well, mm -hmm. correct? So would that be maybe one reason why you have higher insurance? I have, I have to have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars required by the federal transportation because of my big record. Um, that's that's just minimum. I have to have at least five thousand uh, dollars cargo insurance that covers the vehicle that I'm towing. We actually carry fifty thousand dollars cargo insurance. <clears throat> that that generally will cover most vehicles that you're towing other than a loaded tractor trailer. We won't tow a loaded tractor trailer because of the liability anyway. But that's the biggest thing is the insurance on the vehicle that you're towing, not the insurance on your truck. Right. That's that's kind of immaterial on that, in right. my opinion. What I'm looking at is the insurance on the vehicle that we're carrying. Say a cable breaks and it comes off and tears the vehicle up, who's going to pay for it if you don't have insurance? Plus the damage that it does to anything else that it hits or somebody that it kills. And then the vehicle that's in the impound lot, how much insurance do you carry on that vehicle when it's in your care? So, so. Mr. Carter just brought up a good point. It's not unusual to have vehicles worth in excess of fifty thousand dollars on the road. No, no. And, and that's so, what the that's what the policy is. <laughs> 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 Fifty-one hundred is for bodily injury, for injuries caused to other people. Well, it just doesn't talk about insurance for other issues, or should it? Or what? it it's on one one of the pages. There's, there's another there's another section that uh, one hundred thousand. Thousand limit on the 
that's yeah, that's it. Fifty thousand dollars. That's actually what I carry. Do you want to say page at the top that references the city manager? No, uh, that should have been taken out. I thought I got that. This was a uh, model ordinance that the chief found that I. This is basically a starting point. It's something that's never been addressed. As long as 